Hey and welcome back. Something that I've been meaning to get for the workshop for quite some time now are a set of V-blocks. For the past year or so I've made do with a piece of aluminium with a V-channel cut down the centre and whilst for the most part that does work, these obviously aren't precision machined parts whereas V-blocks obviously are. So I think it's time to make some V-blocks. What I have here is an offcut of some 300 grade steel low carbon 40 by 40 steel bar. What I'll do is I'll cut off enough so I can make two of them. V blocks usually come as a matched pair so it makes sense for me to make two of them at the same time. And what I'll do is I'll machine one and then I'll cut it in half once most of the machining is done. Doing it this way will make machining it a lot quicker and it should help ensure that both parts are identical at least before I heat treat them. With it faced on all sides, I'm going to put it in the toolmaker's vise and then hold it in the big vise at a 45 degree angle to cut the chamfers. Now strictly speaking, I didn't have to do this, but the plan is to hold it like this to cut the V-channel, so think of this as testing the method. And the chamfers came out looking really good and even, which is a good sign for the V-grooves. The next thing that I'm going to do is use the DRO to add some layout lines to the part. I have a carbide scraper in the chuck and I'll use it to mark out the outline of the channels. I have one channel for smaller diameter work and one larger one for larger work. Now obviously I didn't have to do this because I will be using the DRO to position the tool but it is a good sanity check to have these layout lines and it does help you catch any errors before you end up scrapping the part. Next I'll set up the vise again to be at a 45 degree angle and I will check it for jaw lift because it was affecting it when I was cutting the chamfers. Now looking back on it, this obviously wasn't the best solution. There isn't much holding the vise in place and it wasn't super rigid. I'm sure you can see just in the cut that it wasn't happy. The chips were pretty small and it was chattering a fair bit. So after battling with the mill for longer than I'm happy to admit, I eventually gave up this setup and I did it in the big vice like I probably should have done from the beginning. With the V-blocks looking a lot better than they did before, I can now cut a small slot down the centre of each V and that should help relieve the back corner of the V which should allow me to machine parts with a 90 degree corner and it should help it sit flush in the V.
Next, I can cut slots on the side for the clamps to hold onto. And I'll be making the clamps later in the video. Well so far the V-block is looking really good, and with most of the machining done, I can now cut them in half. Now I could have left it as one piece, longer V-blocks are a thing, and they do have their uses, but personally at the moment, I feel that I can get better use from two smaller V-blocks than I could from one big one. Now before I harden them, I am going to quickly test them on the surface plate, just to make sure that they are perfectly machined, and it should help us see how much they warp or distort during heat treatment. Now measuring between two points on a piece of ground rod, shows us that these two points are equal in height, or at least equal to within 0.01mm, which is sort of what I'm aiming for. So let's move on to getting them hardened. These are pieces of low carbon steel, so the easiest way to do that is to case harden them and carburize them, which is probably a method that you've seen a lot of in the previous videos. Now I will be modifying the process ever so slightly. I have found an old method in an old machining book and I do want to give it a go. The method is going to start off the same as you have seen in the past. Crushed up charcoal dust and around 5% by weight sodium carbonate is going to be used to be the source of carbon monoxide gas, which will help in turn raise the carbon content of the steel. I'll pack the parts in the packing box and then I'll seal it with clay. I got all right results using an air drying clay, but proper high temperature kiln clay will work the best. Now with this part, unlike some of the other parts that I've case hardened, it's actually somewhat common for V-blocks to be case hardened, so I do have a reference for how other people have case hardened their V-blocks. What I'm aiming for is a relatively thin case, so what I'll do is I'll case harden it for about an hour, and then I'll leave it in the forge to cool overnight. And after letting it cool overnight in the furnace, we can empty the packing box. And one interesting thing to see is how there isn't any sodium carbonate left, even after a relatively short case harden. 
I do remember reading somewhere that sodium carbonate breaks down at a relatively low temperature, which probably explains why it's used in addition to barium carbonate, which breaks down at a high temperature. Although using barium carbonate probably isn't recommended in a home workshop environment. Now one change that I am making to the method is to use a flux to protect the steel from oxidizing as I heat it up. The oxide really did a number on my vice, so the best thing I can do is try and avoid it here. I'm sure that a lot of you will be familiar with the boric acid method that was made popular by Chris at Clickspring. I don't have any boric acid on hand, but I did a quick test with some brazing flux and it seemed to work just fine. Now whilst I let the parts heat up, I'll prepare the quenching oil. The method that I'm following calls for a relatively small amount of quench oil compared to the part, and it also calls for the oil to be heated up to a smoking temperature. The theory at least is it allows for a more uniform cooling, and whilst I am familiar with this sort of quenching, I wasn't too sure about the small oil to part ratio that it called for. Now the quench oil that I used left a pretty thick layer of polymerized oil which was pretty difficult to remove. I left it in a tub of sodium hydroxide for a few days and that actually did a pretty good job of breaking down that coating. And it looks like the flux did a really good job at protecting the part. Now the hardness that I got with this method is definitely lower than I get with cold oil. Testing it using the testing hardness files shows that the 55 Rockwell C file is starting to bite, but the 50 isn't. So that indicates that it's somewhere between 50 to 55 Rockwell C hardness. And according to the book, a tamper isn't strictly necessary with this method. Now the most important thing is, well, did the parts warp, and will it throw the parts out of spec? And whilst it's only a tiny amount, I can definitely feel that the two parts aren't perfectly flat against each other anymore, so I can easily imagine that it has been thrown out of spec. Now of course I don't have a surface grinder, so unfortunately, I am going to be using the mill as a makeshift grinder again. I'm not a huge fan of doing it, but with the right precautions, I am able to keep the grit off the machine ways. The most important thing though is that I machine them in such a way that they are both matched. The V grooves need to be in exactly the same position and they need to be the exact same width otherwise they won't be matched and they will cause issues when I machine parts. And thankfully the parts have come out to within spec, which for me is within 0.01mm on the indicator. Anything more is just a bonus. Now there does seem to be a very slight incline on some of the parts. I'm not sure if it's an issue with the milling machine or the jaw lift on the vise, but what I should have done is used an angle block rather than the vise to hold the parts down. It's what I did with the Toolmaker's vise, and I got really good results doing it that way. 
but at least for the moment, I'm really happy with how it turned out, and it's within spec for what I need. The final thing that I need to make are a set of clamps to hold the parts in the V-block. Now I think the best course of action would be to get these CNC cut, but since I have a forge, I might as well try some blacksmithing and see if I'm any good at it. Now I promise you I did have a plan worked out in my head on how I was going to do this, but really in the heat of the moment, when you only have like 30 seconds of actually hitting it, my skillful worked out plan just evolved into me hitting the steel with a hammer until it looked right. Between me running to and from the forge and setting up the camera, it just didn't work out for me and I just didn't have enough time for precision on this one. With it looking questionable at best, I think the best hope that I have is to try and clean it up and hope it looks presentable. The final thing left to do is drill a hole for the clamping screw. I'm using an M6 cap head screw, but if you want to protect the part, you can always put a brass or a nylon cap on the end. And those are the V-blocks done. I really was meaning to do this a long time ago, but I just couldn't get my hands on a piece of steel, or at least I couldn't case harden parts until now. And expect to see these parts pop up a lot in the future. And with that, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, see you next time.